Israel, settler colonialist apartheid state. Six years ago, when Israel launched a blitzkrieg against Gaza, it left only after some 700 Gazans, men, women, and children, were dead. This occurred under George W. Bush, with a U.S. neocon administration winking, nodding, and blowing kisses of approval. Today, under neoliberal rule, we see that something indeed has changed under Barack Obama. It has gotten worse. For this time, Israel may double the death toll from July 2008. It's already close with 1,350 deaths of Palestinians. When one looks at the news, one must remember the old adage that in war, the first casualty is truth. For despite the PR war that projects Israel as avoiding civilians in their battle against the government of Hamas, the fact is Israel intentionally targets civilians, which is a war crime. Don't take my word for this. Ziv Schiff is Israel's preeminent military analyst, and he has stated in Haaretz newspaper, quote, the Israeli army has always struck civilian populations, unquote. Schiff added that they do so purposely and consciously. Schiff explained that the army has never distinguished civilian from military targets, but purposely attack civilian targets. One would know this listening to U.S. news coverage, which makes Palestinian suffering virtually invisible while privileging Israeli voices and perspectives even when absurd. Loss, too, is the real source of this carnage, over half a century of Israeli violation of international law by massive land theft, water theft, and the imposition of a cruel military occupation by a settler colonialist state which has no use for the indigenous peoples of Palestine and yet lusts for its land. Gaza has become an open-air prison, the largest on earth, presided over by an apartheid government that kills its citizens like it's killing chickens. Obama, echoing Bush, talks about Israel's massacres by saying Israel has the right to defend itself. But one wonders, doesn't Palestine have that right as well? From Imprisoned Nation, this is Mumia Abu Jamal. These commentaries are recorded by Noel Hanrahan of Prison Radio. Brother Gidon Ben Yashar I'm Vincent Cheeks, entertainer, actor, and activist. All right, so we're talking, so today's topic, we'll discuss, I think we're going to start out discussing and open up and talking a little bit about what's going down in Gaza. Man, the real deal. It's such a hot topic, and there's so many uh, atrocities taking place and just so much taking place that I, I wouldn't even, you know, where do you start on something like this? You know what I'm saying? Where do you even begin to, to open a dialogue and a discussion that would make any type of sense and have any type of rationale? So now, but I think we were talking before the show, Vince, and you were saying that you want, you had some questions that you may want to start it off with, brother. Yeah. Uh Give the people a little background history on the yeah. Israeli-Palestine conflict. Uh, for the most part, people know that it started in 1948 when Israel gained its sovereignty as a state. Um, Palestinians didn't take too kind to that. Uh, because when Israel was formed, they took 77% of the Palestinian land. Mm -hmm. um, so if you were a Palestinian, you see how that would be problematic. And from there, since 1948, it's been a constant back and forth as to whether they would recognize each other as sovereign countries, uh, which both have refused. Israel has refused to recognize Palestine. Palestine has refused to recognize Israel. Why has Israel refused? I mean, why has Palestine refused to recognize Israel? Uh, Palestine feels that the land belongs to them, and they feel that the uh, Israelis were forced upon them by Britain, mm -hmm. um, and basically given their land. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, their land was given mm -hmm. away to uh, British and Jewish settlers uh, that came over from Europe, mm -hmm. and so that has uh, the Palestinians fighting mad. And so with that, um, you know, most of 
everything that happens is centered around Israel. You know, Israel is United States ally. Israel is this. Israel is that. Israel is the the center of the Holy Land. Um, Palestine is. <laughs> right. And that's, yeah. that's the debate. Is, right. Right. Is, right. It, is right. it Israel so, or is it Palestine? Palestine. Well, yes. it's good that we got Maddie. I'm here, you know, a uh, 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 Palestinian because I'm mean, like I'm of that I'm of that opinion too, and I'm not ashamed to mention it, that I believe that Israel is an illegal state. Definitely. There is no Israel. Mm -hmm. I well, don't recognize this place called Israel. It's illegal. It was illegal occupied. It's, it's Palestine. It's Palestinian land, mm -hmm. and it's just that simple. Did you <laughs> exactly. want Did you want to chime in and say something? Yeah, about? definitely. When you were, um, I wanted to say when you were saying that it's a constant back and forth. It's a constant back and forth in terms that the indigenous resists against their colonizers. It is not this, and I, I know you didn't mean anything, by it, but I'm just trying to explain that it's just like when the British colonized um, North America right. and when the Spanish colonized South America, that the indigenous were trying to put up any resistance that they could. And that's what Palestinians are doing now. And he mentions in 1948, when Israel was formed, that meant almost one million Palestinians were kicked out of their homes right. and their native right. villages Refugee were raised and that's what happened to my grandparents my yeah. grandparents were kicked out of their homes and now I don't go back to Palestine when I go back home I go back to Jordan and I go back to Lebanon because my grandparents were refugees and generation after generation we continue to be refugees damn a generation of, of, of refugees mm -hmm. that is that's something else yeah, yeah. Tiff I noticed you were you were clutching the mic did you want to well, I got something to say. Okay. And no offense. Don't take this offense. Maybe we'll one try not to. Okay. But as far as my concern, what you call Palestine, Israel, it's nobody's land. This is temporary, okay? We just living on land, all right? We really don't own anything, what? all right? So so it's really don't we really. But wait, if wait, we wait, have... wait, 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 wait. Let me finish now. Mm -hmm. Okay. We don't really have a title that belongs to us, okay? It's just all land. So it's no need to for people to fight over a piece of land. Everybody should be able to live in peace with one another. No, okay. regardless what your God is or what, what, what you're uh, praying to or what, 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 you, what your, you what your faith is. <laughs> what, what your faith is. You know what I'm okay. saying? You, you, you should be able to live in peace with one another. And that, that's just how it is. Okay, you're saying that it's nobody's land. When my, when my grandfather has a lease to the house, to his house in Palestine, and he was kicked out of it, that's his land. That's his home. He has documentation that this is his home. Mm -hmm. And this is not a religious conflict. There were Palestinian Jews, there were Palestinian Christians, there are Palestinian Muslims. And to this day, they continue to be of different religions. And you talk about peace. What is peace when your parents are killed? And when you're living in a refugee camp? And when you're living in a ghetto? What is peace? You don't want peace with the people who put you in that situation. Israelis are living on our beaches. They're sunbathing on our beaches in their bikinis, in their five-star hotels, in their five-star restaurants on our land while we're being bombed every single day. What's peace? We don't want peace. We want justice. We want our land back. Okay, let me answer that. I, I, I agree with you. You're right. I mean, they all, they're wrong. I mean, both parties are wrong, Peter. And cause, but why is wait, 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 wait. Hold, 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 hold on, hold on, hold on. Because the whole fight about what I mean, what you fighting for? You really fighting for nothing. No, I mean, what was for your land? Okay, you're fighting but, but, for your well, people. Who, okay, okay, you fight. It's one thing to fight for your people. It's and for it's our one, people. It's, in it's, one, it's one thing because if somebody attack your people, that's one thing to fight for your people in self defense. But just the overall concept, it, 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 you're to fighting me, for your land, though, Tiffany. But, but well, who's that? Okay, think, well, who's land? It. What? It's like if them coming to Africa and colonizing Africa, you know what I'm saying? The way right, that they okay, have carved but, up Africa, they with blood diamonds the way they're right. exploiting Africa, the way that they're just, and, and we, the native of Africans, are getting boo-booed on. Okay, you know right, I mean, right. It's when the I'm lands saying, and our people, it's both. Okay, what I'm saying, as far as the people concerned, somebody just come in, just try to attack you and everything, then yeah, that's one thing, you protecting yourself. That's what I'm saying. But what I'm saying is, uh... No, that's if, what they're doing. Okay, yeah, that, that's it. I mean, that's what I'm, I'm looking at. I'm looking at as, as far as self-defense, but just saying that, oh, this is my land. No, this is your land. Well, this, this is my land. Oh, this is your land. We this see the brother being real patient. I'm sorry, right. we're going to get back to Tiff because he's okay. making some good points. Okay. We're going to get back to you. But I see Vince waiting there. Go ahead, brother. If anything knows any, anything about this world, land is a very valuable resource. Mm -hmm. Okay? You can do a lot of stuff on land. And part of the reason that the Palestinians are so upset about this land is because it affects their water supply, it affects their, their right to uh, agriculture and their farming system. Um, it really affects their everyday life and the, the unemployment rate has gone up 
40 percent, 50 percent, they said in the last 20, 30 years due to the constant fighting, the constant bombing, the constant losing of what they feel is their right to exist. Um, and in my research, my research showed that the Palestinians have been around since basically 10,000 BC, right. roughly. They're one of the first economic um, societies. Let me ask you this, though, Vince, and I'm sorry for cutting you because it's such a hot thing, and we, we're going. Yeah, we need let to me ask you. Let me let answer. me ask you this. And, and Gideon know how to read and go. You was just talking about you know <laughs> what I'm saying. We trying to stop the bloodshed. So get on in here, brother. If you got to jump in, what I want to step. What gives the uh, Yahudi? What gives the uh, uh, Israeli or the Jewish people the right to even Palestinian land? What are they basing their claim upon? Oh, the same way the Arabs did when they went over there to Africa, based upon a god, a deity. So did it make it right? But for the Arabs, Arabs but the Arabs went to Africa mostly in terms of trade. That and most of Africa was not colonized. It was the most people became Muslims and they changed their way of life due to Arab trading, Arab merchants coming through Africa. And Arab colonization is just as wrong as any other colonization. I mean, no, it's, no, all, it's, wrong. it's no, all wrong. It's all wrong. That's some true. Wrong. And that's some true statement. That that right there is. I'm glad to hear a Palestinian say that because I get uh, as being an, an an African, you know what I'm saying, and coming up in an Islamic home. One of the things that I get tired of always hearing is that we were the weak ones. Oh, Islam was forced at us as the sword by the point of the sword like we was weak. But we talk about you, some of the greatest empires in African history were Islamic, the Songhai, Mali, Man of Musa, who came and destabilized the whole Meccan economy when he made Hajj with just the wealth that this African brother had under, under the religion of Islam. So when you hear a lot of times they just play us to be weak and like we just were some punk Africans that somebody came over and raised the sword and said, say la ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. And we just said it. You know what I'm saying? No, it was through, like he said, the trade. And so much so during the trade that Swahili was very much influenced by that in Swahili there are so many Arabic words when you look at the uh, Nguza Saba the seven principles of Kwama, Kwanzaa what do you got? You got Nia in, in, in Nguza Saba the separate Nia is what? Intentions okay. in Islam, niya is when they say make your niya, it's intentions. You know what I'm saying? They say in uh, Swahili, we say salam wa uhuru, peace and freedom. In Islam, we say salam, peace. So it's still we see the thing that 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 it was influenced by. So I do want to say that, but I do want to go by and let you finish your statement. Even like she said, Arab colonization is wrong. So even if their God gave them permission to invade, if they feel like didn't it, doesn't that same thing apply to the Israeli and to to uh, these Jews that come in and say that their God has given them and has entitled them to the land of these people? Isn't that just as wrong? I, 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 then I should say they all you are did. wrong. I think I said they all are wrong. You know what I'm saying? What I'm saying, and you know, you you all was taking me the wrong way earlier. What I'm trying to say is, okay, if somebody, a foreigner, come into your country, instead of that foreigner just attacking the people just so to get the resources, they need to be able to talk it out with those uh, individuals that's already in that land and see if they can be able to have one part of the land for themselves, you know, so they can practice their culture and the other. No, um, I, I understand what you're saying. The problem wasn't Jewish immigration. The problem was well, right, clearing the state of Israel I, I on our there were Jews right. Zionism. Zionism. I, I see what you're Yeah, there about. were Jews living there, and I wholeheartedly believe that if people coming from Europe, from the Holocaust, came to Palestine and they said, we want to live alongside y'all in Palestine as Jews, Muslims, and Christians, yeah. Palestinians would have no problem. That's I stay in I'm my saying. home, and you build a new home. But don't raise my home and build it over mine. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. That, that's that's what I'm saying. saying real Jews, they devil portray <laughs> brother, brother Gideon. Yeah, how we how we having a talk? How do you feel about this? Israel and the Hebrews, and then we got somebody on it and, and ain't even chimed in. Well, you know, it's uh, a very interesting and powerful topic internationally. Uh, I am a Palestinian. In Palestine, their our 9/11 is their 24/7. It was a term coined on one of the, by one of the guests we had here. And really what uh, my beautiful sister Tiffany was saying in a perfect world is the way that type of negotiations should take place when right. it comes to land right. and resources because in reality we are nothing but animated pieces of dust ourselves. But in a heightened sense of capitalism as a world economic tool to beat down the rest of the nations with carbon-based fuels driving the whole world, the issue has to do for me as a Hebrew 
with spirituality. See, I understand that my creator is running, moving all of these people mm. around. And that's, that what those, that's what they're saying over there, that their creator right. has well, entitled them to that. Absolutely. And, and because, see, we're in the fall of man's dominion on the planet. And he has been replaced. You know, if son was new... here, you know he'd have been hit this gap. Well, <laughs> <you know? laughs> well uh, there, the, in scripturally, a new priesthood has taken place. Women now have been involved in the priesthood. What we find because of man's blood lust and his inability to follow basic instructions has caused world chaos and pandemics. Who, whose instructions? You know, my, my question goes back because when you say this, when you say, you know, according to these so-called scriptures, they're biblical scriptures, you know, and like, Not you know. Not necessarily the Hammurabi Code, uh, 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 the uh, negative whatever, confessions, okay. righteous uh, they're, they're principles. Righteous principles, but I'm saying to justify what's going on over here, they're, they're using uh, the Torah, the, the, these particular things to justify Justify these atrocities. Exactly. They use it, and by this being a judo Christian society, and those pseudo still uh, judo, pseudo <laughs> judo, <laughs> judo, judo, <laughs> judo. By this, by this being that society, then they're playing on that Jewish people being the chosen one, Absolutely. and anti-Islam, anti-Muslim propaganda. This uh, terrorist stuff that they use for us to turn a blind eye against the atrocities that are happening to human well, beings. If I may reflect on the biblical accounts prophetically on what would be happening in this age and in this time, it has prophetically announced that there will be wars in the land, that the epicenter of the world war machine would be in Jerusalem, Palestine, that the people of the book would be under attack, and that the economy of the world and the uh, world community would be setting up a global empire. All these things actually happen to be happening. Yeah, but I mean, it's, so it's not coincidental. It's not, but it's interpretation. <laughs> According to the it same is, scriptures, that, they said that when they told Ibrahim, uh, who is translated as Abraham, mm -hmm. when they talked about it, uh, Ishmael, one of the prophecies, according to these same scriptures, that every nation's son would be raised against, every nation would be raised against your son. Exactly. And Ishmael is being, is one of the father of the Arab, is, is the father of the Arab nations. Right. So then they could say that this prophecy is being fulfilled. Absolutely. I think that any time that we invoke, when we start to invoke, the name of God mm -hmm. for in, in these politics and these mm -hmm. reasons that you're always gonna you're always gonna have that division. Go ahead. Yeah, oh. Ahead, well, I wanted to say that a lot of people, especially in America, it's depicted as this religious conflict between right. Muslims and Jews. It's not, that's not the issue. The problem is basic human rights, Palestinian human rights right now. There are, there are Muslim Palestinians and there are Christian Palestinians. Christian Palestinians make up about one in every five Palestinians. There are many, especially in Bethlehem and Jerusalem and Nazareth. Mm -hmm. there, there are huge Christian communities. So this is not a problem of whose God is right. And uh, if we were to follow true Judaism and true Christianity and true Islam, then we wouldn't have this problem. The problem is Zionism. Yeah. The founders yeah. of Zionism did not believe in God. Right now, Israelis, about half of Israelis, do not believe that there is a God. Right. So they are doing everything, justifying it in the name of God, in the name of Judaism, in the name of everything, and they don't even believe that God exists. Oh, wow. Like many of That's the new American for me. preachers, mm. <laughs> they talk mm. God, oh, but well. their God is gold. Exactly. Oil yeah. and diamonds. Yeah. See, when we're living in, in, and Madonna told you, this is a material world and it produces <laughs> material girls. Mm -hmm. And in, when we see the conflict <laughs> in Gaza and Palestine, it's really all about materialism. Mm -hmm. That's why the, the focus not so much is the war itself, but it is the alternatives to war. And the people who have chosen to war, not, albeit many are forced into it, the key essence was how did Gandhi defeat the colonization of his people? They stopped wearing their, uh, buying their goods. Mm -hmm. They stopped wearing their clothes. They cut off the influences of the outer society. Well, we don't have that ability. That's why without divine intervention, our hope is nil, zero. Black nationalism, baby. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Revolutionary black nationalism is the solution. <laughs> okay, uh, well for me, I'm gonna take God out of the equation oh, for right now. God, go all and down. <laughs> uh, and my question is, how do we get to this point where we are today in this conflict. 
Um, in my research, I go back to the Ottoman Empire. Uh, the Ottomans ruled from roughly 1517 to basically 1917. Mm. Um, almost all of the Middle East, mm. almost all the Arab speaking countries. Um, towards the end of their rule under Sultan Abdul Hamad II, uh, he wanted to become more modernized. Mm -hmm. And so he wanted to be modernized in communications, education, and in the military. And in so doing that, he opened up the doors to bring in uh, European engineers and investors. And when he did that, they came over and they built roads and they built railroads uh, for the land over there. But it also opened the door for the Jewish settlement to start happening uh, because once they were in, you know, they started bringing family and friends over uh, from Europe to settle into the land of Palestine. Mm -hmm. And so basically... And then British colonization. Mm -hmm. Right. It was the, Brit Ottoman. Brit Brit the British colonization. Um, and another thing that happened under Sultan Abdul Hamad II was that he and other rich Arabs started selling land mm -hmm. to these Europeans that were coming over, Europeans that were coming in. And so, you know, the once interloper. More, right. Once more and more came in, uh, and their population started to grow, when the British Army captured Palestine from the Ottoman Empire in 1917, they came up with the Balfour Declaration, mm -hmm. yes. which basically stated that the government view with favor the establishment of a, na of a Jewish national home in Palestine, provided this did not prejudice the civil and religions and religious rights of the other inhabitants of the country. Mm. So even as they were coming in and the British were making this mandate, mandate they said that, okay, Jew Jewish people, you can come in and you can make these settlements but do not disturb the other people of the land that are already there. Mm -hmm. yeah. At some point in the early 20s, is when the conflict really started uh, escalating between the Jewish settlers and uh, the Palestinians. And that basically is what led up to the war in 1948 where... Um, America, I mean, but the Balfour Declaration was definitely unjust, 100%. They gave the land to the Jewish people. And right. even in the Balfour Declaration, I don't remember what it says exactly, but it says something along the lines of, this is what is going to happen, whether or not it is just. 700,000 <laughs> Palestinians are going to be expelled, whether or not it is just. There are 700,000 Palestinians living there, and if these people come in, that's just what's going to happen. And then, and, no matter what. And this isn't the first time. And then we have to look at this isn't the first time that the Zionists have tried to find a home. They tried it with Uganda. Mm -hmm. Also with Australia, also, right. before you know they went so, to Palestine, exactly. there was land offered to them exactly. in but Australia. But I think it was Edie, was Edie in, or Edie yeah. in charge. Edie See, he peeped, Edie. He, Edie, Edie peeped the plan. <laughs> See, the brother peeped the plan. That's what, you know, and not knocking the Palestinians. That's what happens when y'all be friendly. See, sometimes you can't right. be friendly. Well, Edie, I mean, ran they butt up out of it. He was like, no. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And get them up. You're not well, going to yeah, come in. exactly. And, 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 a big, oh, well, You know, you're not going to establish this in Africa. I see what you're trying to do. So you need to get up out of here. You know what I'm saying? But like you said, you go to the Islam people when they being neighborly and trying to help people out, this and that, you let it's like letting that relative that you know damn well you don't need to let him right. in the house. You let him sleep on your couch, next thing you know, he never leaving. <laughs> right. You know what I'm saying? He'd have moved in. And so once the British, you know, they came in, they took over, they made these mandates, divided up the land. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then in 1947, they decided we don't want to deal with this no more. Yeah. The British, we don't want to deal with Palestine no more. We're going to give it over to the United Nations. In November 20, on November 29th, 1947, that's when the UN voted 33 to 13 to create Israel as a state. Mm -hmm. Now, as a Palestinian who was not the Palestinians were not consulted at right. all exactly. about this division of land and giving right. these Jewish settlers. Uh, well, they were being gangstered. Right. Mm -hmm. well, gangstered. Well, yeah. My question is, mm -hmm. could Britain and the United Nations have done more um, from the beginning to... Uh, to not get to, so we wouldn't be to the point where this conflict is now. Could they have done more when they of were course. dividing their land? No, no, no. They shouldn't have gotten involved in the beginning. They only got involved to give the Jewish people that land. They right. didn't get involved so you think for peace or right. anything. Yeah. They, they were, the British were colonizing Palestine. They had no interest in Palestine. They were brutal against Palestine. Absolutely. Just like the Zionists. Yeah, just like anywhere else. Right. Yeah, they were right. brutal. So no, they couldn't have done anything because they're bloodthirsty war criminals of the time. They so couldn't you, have done anything. The best thing could have 
this is what they wanted to happen. Land. You're saying this is what they wanted to happen. This is Absolutely. what they wanted to happen, and y'all made a really good point with Palestinians being friendly. Well before 1948, it's documented that when these Jewish settlers would come before Palestinians knew that they had the intention of taking over the land, right. they took advantage of the Arab culture. Right. That Arabs are very friendly and neighborly, yeah. and they would invite these people in their homes, right. and then they would go and make plans, they would a map of people's homes, oh, so yeah. that and later on, and they destroyed these villages. The same people that they invited into right. their homes and right. served them coffee and tea and everything, they went and destroyed their homes and kicked them out of Sound, the Sounds like the, the Americans and the Indians, right. The Americans yeah. and the Indians mm -hmm. happen the same way. Tiffany, you, you wanted to point, make a point? Okay, I was getting ready to say, Similar to the same way with the Africans. Mm -hmm. When the Arabs and when the Europeans came out, they was getting a little too friendly, a mm -hmm. little too nice, uh, giving away the ideas of uh, culture to mm -hmm. these Schooling people. them. Schooling them in. Look what happened. And look what happened yeah. to Mike. Right. Remember, Remember the mic. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, well, are you done? Oh. Oh, no, no, no. no. Okay. He was saying something, so okay. he kind of yeah. distracted okay. me a little okay. bit. Okay, I'm but, sorry. Uh, yeah, but I mean, yeah, you know, it, I mean, you have to be careful with who you allow into your homes and things like that in nature. And I mean, maybe the Palestinians didn't think twice about the Jews. You know, they didn't think that, oh, the Jewish people had intentions of doing um, such a cruel crime uh, to their people. So, I mean, so I mean, they, maybe they felt sorry, just like how the Native American uh, felt sorry for the Europeans when they came from um, Europe, uh, Great Britain mostly. And... You know, they didn't think that the Europeans was going to wipe off their population, mm -hmm. send them to reservation mm -hmm. camp, and create United States. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and, exactly. And let me throw this disclaimer in there, too, for that, because it's not, you know, the first time these Zion, the first thing these Zionists like to do is holler anti-Semitism. Right, right. But, so it's not the Jewish people. Mm -hmm. It's not Judeoism. It's not Jew, you know, it's the Zionists. Mm -hmm. Right. It's this whole Zionist scheme and this whole Zionist plot for the land of Palestine. Right. And just like Netanyahu made that statement we was talking about to Hillary Clinton. It's not that, just the Atlanta fan, it's world domination. World domination. Mm -hmm. But we're talking, since we're talking about this thing, like he talked like this madman Netanyahu said, made the statement to uh, Hillary Clinton that I think is the mass destruction of civilians. Did you see that one? The mass destruction no. of civilians. Mm -hmm. And as Americans, I'm sure you can understand. I put it on, yo, you have to check it out. Find a clip, find mm -hmm. it on YouTube or whatever. I mean, he says it in front of Hillary and 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 and, 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 and Hillary Clinton is speechless. Yes. You know what I'm saying? She's right. sitting there looking crazy. And he says, I'm sure as Americans, you can understand why. Because they understand studying in the history of America, America has done the exact same thing. Exactly. Genocide. See, there's yeah. a duality here because I, even though I'm a Palestinian, I also am an Israelite mm -hmm. reflecting the history of my people in the region of that area. I mean, our understanding of the biblical story tells us that we as a people are the people of the book despite our various hues. And I have family right now, Brother Slow Mo, I know members of his family is watching, in the land, he may be back now. And they don't have the right to be there. They, well, I could take out my Quran and say that I have the right to this land. It doesn't mean anything. That's not your God. That's my God. You're so right. he doesn't have the right to be there unless they have actual claims to the land. And see, we biblically have claim to the land. And I have my other brother. Point? <laughs> yeah, I was about, did you I was about to say, did you, uh, yeah. biblically. did you check that? And like she said, Quranically, you have no right. Absolutely. Well, my brother Daniel, see, we have people who have grown up in America understood that there's no such thing as black, colored, negro, jigaboo, coon, spook, mm. uh, connected to the <laughs> culture of the biblical story because of the lack of identity, and it directs us back to the region, from the River Nile to the great river Euphrates. It's, it's the same with Islam. In Islam, that there's no black, no white. It's not even permissible to say white Muslim, black Muslim. When you're Muslim, you're Muslim. Yeah, so Malcolm it's the same. said that. Yeah, it's the same, it's the same in Islam. We can say the same thing in that the, yeah, that the Jewish people, mm -hmm. that one of the the curses of the Jewish people is that they were no longer the people of God and they don't no longer know that. They still think that they're running around that they're, Definitely. you know what I'm saying, that they're the chosen people and they're no longer the chosen people anymore. They disobeyed see, when God. I reference yeah. Gandhi, they kill prophet after prophet. The reason I referenced him, see, you're sure Gandhi, Martin Luther King, even though the parallels are striking, the one constant was peace. See, when right. you start to try to use blood 
to cure the fact that your blood is being shed, you actually become a beast like the beast untrue, you're trying untrue. to fight. Untrue, untrue. You cannot have your rights only through the means of violence. That is the only way you will have your rights. Sometimes if, if you might violence, something that is good for you. Brother. If something was taken through force, the only way it can be taken back is through now, force. Peace does not work with these bloodthirsty colonizers. It does not work with the British. It does not work with the Americans. It does not work with the Israelis. It now let me let, me let me let me let me just say let me say uh, in theory and in principle I agree because even though I'm a biblical enthusiast and I know peace will be even the Creator said there is going to be war and revolution that will have to occur to upheave to overthrow the present corrupt system because like I said this system male dominated bloodlust killer system is getting ready to get put down it's putting itself down by the way but it's going to be totally put down but it's not going to be because of their power and their militarism and all the people who are warmongers are going to die it's the people who promote peace and love not that you won't fight but that you know that that militarism killing is not the way well we got a long time for these warmongers to die right peace is peace true. is only and the, true right I'm we're sorry, trying to establish how we can get to a peaceful resolution it's right called now. nuclear um, armament that's what's right <laughs> black we talking about a long time right. it don't take but one push of a button push player a button. okay and, and, and peace is and, peace is the reaction the peace is <laughs> peace is the reaction after an action peace is the calm after the storm exactly. you know what i'm saying the only way that people want exactly. peace the only way that you call for peace like if you and i fighting. You know what I'm saying? And I'm tired of getting my butt kicked and you trying to get your butt kicked. Right. Pretty soon we're going to shake. We're going to be like, look, man, because we, we, you know, but yeah. the reason they don't want peace now is because a madman is taking the helm. Right. See, my thing and my question is to the people, what are we going to do about some of the black son and I talked about? I never thought that I would live in a lifetime where I would see a Hitler type. Mm. I never thought in a million years that I would witness a madman be at the helm of government and indiscriminately drop bombs on women and children. I'm not even You're talking about Rock your king. <laughs> hey, I'm talking drone about it, if, if we're talking about it, I'm best talking about president of uh, Brown. I'm talking about I'm talking about America and I'm talking about I'm talking about America if they're hand in hand aiding and supporting this know. bad man. Uh know. before they let, broke for Congress two or three days ago, we just uh Sent more military. Sent more money. We sent two hundred and fifty million dollars to yeah. Israel for military saying? purposes. That type of stuff. We got people over here in this country starving. Hello. Detroit yeah. is Hello. almost a wasteland. That's almost. That's okay. Yeah. And but we have two hundred and fifty million mm. to send to back the Israeli mm -hmm. army in defense system. Mm -hmm. Come on. Because see, it's all paper, baby. That white boy got your mind, and it ain't just <laughs> a white boy. He got your mind on that materialism again. The power we have is spiritual, right. so we will be able to. May I say something? Let me say something. Okay, you always mention about peace. How would you have peace? Well, if you want to have peace, first and foremost, you need to acknowledge yourself. You need to start knowing yourself. That's right. Mm -hmm. That's right. Okay, knowledge of self is important. Mm -hmm. And then once you create, once you have that knowledge of self, then you'll be able to acknowledge that other individual, not as your opponent, mm -hmm. but as your neighbor. Mm -hmm. As a human just like yourself, mm -hmm. a spiritual mm -hmm. being that's going through human experience like you. Mm -hmm. So that way, good. Because so you acknowledge, all going through the same right? You acknowledge him as no, human, so you know I, how to bust we, his head. But, but, but if we all had that mentality, we wouldn't have. We, wait, wait a minute. Now. Let, if we, I'm, I'm, if, we, I'm, I'm, if we all had that mentality, we wouldn't have as much corruption that we got going on today. Are you sure? If, if we, if we had that let mentality, finish, let finish. If we had that mentality, but we don't have that mentality hey, because we are basing. I, I, we first and foremost, I'm gonna say this. We are we create an, we create an illusion. Exactly. Okay, we create well, an create, illusion. The illusion wait, wait, is already wait, created. Wait, wait, yeah. wait, wait, wait. We create an illusion, meaning that we come up with our, our own ideas, our own concept, of what we believe. Mm -hmm. You know, and and we make that in our terms a reality. The, the first law of human nature is self-preservation. True. That's the first yeah. law but of human it, nature. What I'm it's, telling you is, when, it's if all someone is striking you, right oh, one at a time, one at a time. Wait, 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 no, we're not gonna make the reader soft. <laughs> No, 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 no. Listen, well, I'm me too. We can't understand two people at once. That's my right. okay. Okay, I want to finish my statement. Okay, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. But what I'm saying is, okay, with everything that we going through right now. On this plane, it's basically it's it's made up. It's made up by man. It's it's 
Based on the, what man is based on what man thinks and how man says it's based on man's Tiffany. desire. Wait, let, can I finish let, my let statement? It, finish. It's based on man desires, okay? So but outside of that all this stuff that all this war and all that that's that's Tiffany. something that that's man's device okay. that's bring about man's destruction man's device will cause his own destruction okay that's what it is Listen, that's what the, it the is let me try in the Palestinians okay, but, but in the real world it's not the okay. Palestinian holding that baby with his head blown off is very right, real right right okay that's, it's that's real but I'm okay I have, I have wait, to chime in I have to chime in because wait, wait, I have to because do because the reality behind okay there's a reality behind the illusion okay Mm -hmm. That's what I'm saying. The it problem is, is we okay. need to stop speaking in general terms. Let's, let's we need to stop speak. saying all this corruption, all this war, all this whatever, mean, because I mean, it's I mean, not. I mean, okay, I mean, one say, just let me speak. Yeah. Because it's not all this war. It's not all this corruption. It's <laughs> Zionist okay. corruption. It's Zionist war. It's genocide. It's, okay. it's not war. Exactly. And that's the problem. When we speak state. in these general terms, you have Americans saying, oh, well, both sides are doing wrong. Yeah. No, not <laughs> both sides are doing wrong. And we were talking earlier about the indigenous people. The difference, Palestinians are just like every single indigenous people in the world. Okay. We resist more. We have been able to resist more. That is the no. only difference. No. That we have uh, uh, actual capabilities to kill those, to resist against those who murder us. Not that we have uh, a strong force or a military force or anything, but we do what we can. And because we do that, we're labeled terrorists. The only way we will not be labeled terrorists is if we sit down and we say, okay, and take comply. our land and murder right. our exactly. children exactly. and whatever. That's exactly. the problem. When you use these general terms, people say, Hamas is wrong and Israel is wrong. No, Hamas is not wrong. Hamas is doing what every single in, indigenous okay. person has the right Should, to do. Hamas was created in 87 as a, 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 as a need. They saw a need to fight the, the Jews Absolutely. in Israel. Absolutely. So that's why Hamas, just like ISIS, was formed in Iraq to fight uh, America in their colonization of Iraq over there. Absolutely. I, you know, peace is not going to be established. You can't establish peace with a warmonger. Okay, well, let me say one thing. First and foremost, I do not condone any yeah, type yeah, yeah. of, I any type I of situation yeah. that took place. I understand. Let's get that clear, yeah, all right? Yeah, no, no, yeah. I'm, I'm just trying to clarify the terms okay, because these terms I'm are used is by people others. People would just stop thinking so, be so negative all the time mm -hmm. and always being greedy because we are greedy as a people. Mm -hmm. We greedy. We always want something. We always want desire. And our desire is what causes destruction. That's what I'm yeah. saying. I think it's the okay. African man that assimilates and starts to act like other people, man, that starts to live in a capitalist world that have become greedy. Af Africans by nature, the African man by nature, just the same as what happened to the Palestinian no, people by nature, is not greedy. Is, is not greedy and was too even trusted. Even Africans had wars with each ex other. Ex exactly. But even when you wars. look at, we had so tribal it, wars, but when you speak. look at our wars, they were confined either to the combatants or we would have seasons that we would have wars in. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? We didn't go through the whole damn village and rape the children no. and rape and just bomb village and just and kill them. And 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 yeah. You know what I'm saying? We even have rules to warfare. You're going to have disagreements. You're going to have squabbles. You're going to have skirmishes. I think what happens is when you're dealing with a people that don't have any rules to warfare, and this is what we see in the world not saying anything, and us as Africans here have become too complacent. Mm -hmm. There's no way that I can turn on the television and watch what's happening in Palestine and watch, and, and right now specifically Palestine, it is too reminiscent, even more so of what I've seen, but I can only imagine, I wasn't there during the African slave trade, but I can only Im imagine Imagine's how right. horrendous right. that was. But now I'm witnessing something that has to be as horrendous, and me as an African here in America, I question other Africans here in America, they say, how can we sit by and the first thing we holler is we're humanitarians and we're this, and watch these atrocities mm -hmm. happen to women and children. I mean, not even combatants. It's the same thing, but we did that in Iraq. Exactly. I ask anybody, you tell me after they got Saddam out of there and the bath party out of there, mm -hmm. when they went in Fallujah and all that, what did an Iraqi soldier uniform look like? Mm -hmm. You can't tell me what their uniform looked like because they was killing brothers in cowboy hats and flip-flops. Mm -hmm. They was knocking off civilians. Right. You know what I'm saying? They were knocking off people that were just simply saying, you're not going to come through our hood and militarize our neighborhood and set up checkpoints and do all of this type of stuff. The same thing that we would say if you let some Taliban or some Muslims now, anybody, come through one of these black hoods, you have Negroes out there with 38s, 22s, right. Right. everybody right. out there trying to hold down their hood. Right. But when anybody else does it in the world and against this imperialist power mm -hmm. and the and the agents of imperialist power, mm -hmm. then all of a sudden they're terrorists and they're wrong right. and, they're, and they're painting this crazy picture. For standing now, up for their let rights. Let me yeah. just uh, see, <laughs> and of course it'll be difficult to digest what I'm about to say. 
Then I'm going to slide the guy. Well, feed it. Well, feed it to me then, bro. Simply because having a, a philosophical perspective based on biblical ideology and a certain time period in which we're in, we understand that my sovereign king, Yeshua, set an example on the planet. But that example that he set as a king wasn't materialism. He set the example of understanding how to die with intelligence and with power. Are you get to be a Are sacrifice? To, to Listen sac to what I say. It would be difficult. To it. Listen, yeah, it is. Yeah. It is. Now, to be a sacrifice is one to have a specific character. In Islam, you know, there are those who make the definite decision to sacrifice themselves. And they have been prophets, brethren, sisters. Right, but why? So now, my point simply is, for us as a people, the Palestinians, the children of Yah, it is the time of sacrifice. We are to be sacrificed as our heavenly father. And the only time that we were able to be extricated from the position of being sacrificed is when we went willingly. To fight against one's oppressor is not wrong. Right. How you fight is the strategy that belies the oppressor's ability to comprehend because when you uh, operate in the arena that he understands militarization, mm -hmm. uh, armament, killing, mm -hmm. he understands that. But when you go into operation in an area of sacrifice and to deny his ability to control your emotions, that's something that he can't well, do. Well, I'm going to tell beautiful. you. That's beautiful. That's exactly what Palestinians are doing. They're sacrificing their one, lives. One of the, and, and I'm going to jump in. I'm going to let you go yeah. because one of the things is that we, one of the things is that when you say that, that as, as, as Muslims, why they understand that? Because Allah says in the Quran, he says death is, he says oppression is worse than death. So in, in my understanding of that ayat, that you would rather be dead than be oppressed. Right. You would rather give your life, you would give your life for freedom as a panther. Our patriarchy is freedom of death. Harriet Tubman made that statement, freedom of death. So you would rather, that's the sacrifices that you make. Any other sacrifice is less than humane. Any other time to lay down, to take this oppression, to take it uh, laying down, to have your land stolen, your name stolen, to be robbed, raped, maimed, and murdered is insanity. It is. And it's a weakness. And what has happened to us as African people over here, since our desires have been saturated, especially in America, mm -hmm. since we can go to McDonald's and watch cable television and do anything that we want to do, we've lost the will to stand up for anything, even, our, even ourselves, let alone our neighbors. I want to go back to what Miriam said about the resiliency of the Palestinians. Since their conflict started in the mid-20s, the Palestinians have been literally getting their butt kicked, sure. literally handed to them. Uh, 1948, when Israel gained their sovereignty, they got their butt kicked. Uh, the Suez War of 1956, they got their butt kicked. Hmm. The Six Day War of 1967, mm -hmm. uh, where they kept, where Israel captured the West Bank, uh, Egypt, Sinai Peninsula, and Syria's Golan Heights, mm -hmm. they got their butt kicked. Throughout all of that, their one resolve has been, and they came up with this, they had a Khartoum summit in Sudan after the war of 1967, and the whole world was watching to see if they were going to acquiesce and, and bow down to Israel. And they came up with the three no's of Khartoum. Mm -hmm. No recognition, no negotiation, and no peace with Israel. Mm -hmm. And they have lived and stuck by that since 1967. So my question for you, uh, Miriam, is what, is what is it that the Palestinian people want? Not the government, not Hamas. Mm -hmm. What is it that the Palestinian people want? They want to live like everybody else. They want their basic human rights. They want their land. They want to be able to not live in fear. Like, I'm going to tell you honestly, does the normal Palestinian teenager, are they thinking, um, uh, they're definitely more political than anywhere on, on the earth, and they have to be political because of the situation right. that they're living in. Right. But what do they want immediately? They want to be able to go to school in peace. They want their school not to be bombed. They want their father to be living with them. They want just basic human rights. Now, and, and beyond that, once our basic human rights are fulfilled, then we want we want we also want our lands back we want our homes back we want to be able to to just simply live like everybody else the return else. of the refugees to oh, israel that's the a right big, of that's a big uh, sticking yeah. point now all of that you just said can that be attained 
through peaceful negotiations. No. Because you just said that you can't I negotiate wish it could. with war I wish mongers. it could, but it won't be. Because uh, Israel, because this Zionist force is a beast, it does not work through peaceful negotiations. In fact, the three no's that she spoke about, Yasser Arafat, he did make peace with Israel. And a lot of people were disappointed with him because of that. I simply was. Because of that, I saw that what he did, it, it completely went against all the resistance that he put up uh, for decades. Right. And then he suddenly made peace with Israel. And the Palestinian people were disappointed with him. And still, well, Israel did not stop what do you attacking think that, Palestine. Do you think he finally made peace because he was just fed up with all the fighting and he just wanted yeah, to get to some type of resolution? Definitely. Yeah. And, I, and I understand yeah. how he did that as a leader. Yeah. And we still respect him very much as a leader. Okay. But at the same time, when you think about how this whole conflict started in Gaza right now, the genocide, how did it start? They said three Israeli teenagers were, were kidnapped. kidnapped right. It turned out Hamas didn't kidnap those teenagers. Once again, there was a 72-hour ceasefire. Israel broke it by saying that Hamas killed an Israeli soldier. Turned out Hamas didn't kill an Israeli soldier. Whether or not Hamas exists, whether or not these resistance, move, these resistance movements exist, Israel will massacre Palestinians. They will steal our land. They will raise our homes. The only difference is that these resistance movements uh, defend, defend us as much as they can. They defend the Palestinian people as much as they can. So no matter what, they have this plan to ethnically cleanse the native Palestinian population. So somebody who wants to ethnically cleanse the people can all be dealt with through peaceful means. Just like Hitler couldn't be dealt with with peaceful means. Just like any other dictator or uh, fascist power in history. Well, okay, I understand what you're saying. But Israel wants to totally annihilate Palestine. Definitely. Palestine, well, Palestinian government in Hamas want to totally annihilate Israel. Definitely, and we have that right, don't you think? And then, and then when you I don't know, I don't, I don't want to say you have the right to annihilate a whole group of people. But they're colonizers. They're but, not civilians. Let him ask, let every him ask single, the every single let Israeli the citizen has to be in the military. And, and me, so they're literally not even. Let me civilians. throw that when you say Hamas, when you say but government, when you talk. Question. Okay, let me let me throw it in there because he's talking about Hamas. When you say Hamas, Hamas was democratically elected. Okay, so exactly. you're talking about the people. Right. Even though they were democratically elected, uh, through my research, I found that a lot of Palestinians have a problem with Hamas because of their terroristic ways, you know, well, that they've well, been they, they don't have terroristic ways. The problem is that's all Western propaganda. Definitely. Is, I, do we I, I have problems that. with Hamas? Do I have pro problems with Hamas? Definitely. I definitely do. And with Fatah and all Palestinian political parties. But at the same time, Palestinians are with the resistance. No matter who it is, no matter what it is. Like right now, I was just in Jordan. Uh -huh. There was nobody I heard who was against the resistance, who was against Hamas in this time. And that's okay. what a lot of liberals here in America try to do. They go, we're against Hamas. Just stop killing the children. Stop killing the people. Well then you're taking away from our resistance when you do that because we stand with Hamas. We stand with those who defend us. Well they're saying Hamas are the ones that's putting civilians in, in danger by using them as human shields. They're, that, that they're, saying, they're, they're saying Hamas has uh, stored weapons in, in UN uh, refugee camps over and in, in Palestine. And, that has, and been proven, that has been proven as false. As false. By UN officials, by, by So that you're basically saying that's all just that propaganda. That's 100% propaganda and it has okay. been proven as false. As, as, as propaganda. And then, and, then, and then too, let me, I'm, I, I gotta jump in here, man, and I'm Please glad do. That, that we're having this conversation. I don't want you to forget your line of questioning because this is what I wish we'd got too early, I'd shut my mouth and let us do this <laughs> because it's some good question. One of the things is, too, is like you said, there can be no, how do you have a peaceful negotiation with people who have usurped your land? Right. It's the bottom line. Right. What they're doing now is what's, what's happening in Palestine, I mean, we have to study African history here in America, and it's the same thing. What's happening in Palestine, on a larger scale, of course, because, you know, we didn't have mass, but they dropped bombs on a few of us, but not like, totally like they're doing over there, but what has happened is when you blast people out of, into inhumane conditions, then you try to negotiate them with substandard conditions. You know what I'm saying? Like she was saying, they just want to be able to go to school in peace, this and that, and then they're hoping that, they like they did us, they kept us segregated they beat us, they maimed us, they robbed us, and then right. when they integrated us, we just stopped, we fumbled the damn ball. We stopped exactly. fighting. Exactly. We said, okay, now we're cool, we made it. And they said, those Black Panthers are making it hard for you. Those Malcolm X's are making it hard for you. And we didn't fight for reparations and the full and complete either segregation and uh, to be to be not segregated, but be separated from our oppressor and our colonizer. And so this is where, you know what I'm saying, us as Black Nationals and us as separatists are saying that we didn't stop, you know, we're not stopping the fight. You know, of course, now we got more humane treatment 
but it's still substandard. A little, right. No, I mean, you look like that, but it's more humane than, you know what I'm saying? I was just watching Hidden Colors 3 where they were hanging a sister because she went to jail to question about her husband. And they hung her, told her, nigga woman, you don't have a right in hunger. So we're a little more humane than that time. So, but we still can't get comfortable and settle for substandard conditioning. Let Tiffany jump okay. in. I have a question for you. Um, Miriam. Miriam. Um, now, you know, most of the people there, the, most of the civilians on both sides that's being killed are children. No, 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 no on okay. Israel's side. Oh, okay. On Israel side, the Israelis that are being killed are soldiers. Okay, now I'm gonna ask you this, now if you was to fight back, how would you feel as an individual to see the Israeli children being bombed and cut up? Well, first of all, they won't be bombed or cut up or I anything. Mean, I'm saying if, because if they have bomb shelters. They have bomb shelters. And second of supplied all- Supplied by US. Supplied exactly. by, yeah, they have bomb shelters and they have the iron missile defense system. Iron which dome, yeah. The iron dome, which doesn't allow any rockets to enter except a few that Hamas does get okay. in. Okay, but if Israeli children are dying, think about it in the same situation. Does a Native American have the right to kill someone British? at the time of colonization. Does, does uh, an, an indigenous person of South America have the right to kill someone Spanish? Do you believe they have that right? Did you believe they had that right? Do I believe they have the right? So a Native American to kill a British settler, do they, did they have that right? I mean, I don't think they have the right to kill the children. The children, but the children are colonizers. The children are with them. Okay, and anyway, it doesn't matter. That this this topic shouldn't be spoken about because Israeli children aren't dying. They're not dying. It's a hypothetical situation. Let's talk about the reality. Over okay, 300, they get over up, three hundred. Over three. No, they're 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 Palestinian children. Over three hundred and fifty Palestinian children have been murdered. And altogether, over one thousand eight hundred Palestinians have been murdered. Over fifty Israelis have been killed. And you know, uh, only one of them was a civilian. And uh, there's no such thing as an Israeli civilian, they're colonists. There's no such thing as a civilian. Okay. Whereas okay. most of them were soldiers. They were soldiers. Our children are being killed, their soldiers are being killed. Let me That's just, the difference. Let me give this stat on casualties since we're talking about casualties. And this is from uh, 1987 to 2011. There were 7,978 Palestinian casualties. 1,620 of those were children. Mm -hmm. uh, in the same year from 87 to 2011, um, 1,503 Israeli civilians were killed and 142 children were killed in that time frame. So there's a big, huge disparity mm -hmm. Uh, in the number of casualties and children being killed. It's a genocide, most definitely. And, um... Oh. Yeah, we got a call. We have a caller. Okay. Caller? Uh, give him a chance to bring it up. Get to kind of talk him out. Okay, well, uh... And, until then, I think something, a great thing to bring up is... Oh, I'm here. There he is. Listen. Yeah, how you doing? Turn him up. Turn it up. Okay, yeah, how you doing? It's a very yeah, good subject it, you guys are talking about because when the young lady asked the question, does the Native Americans have the right to kill the people of colonization? However, what, what is she saying? And she was asking and about everything that's going on right now. That when she said Native Americans, Africans, whoever, they did those things in the name of their God and in the name of their kings. And it didn't matter who they killed. And right today, it's the same people here where we live in. This country is behind anybody that's trying to colonize, colonize take over anybody's country in, colonize, uh, in the name of colonization and whatever. They don't care. Bottom line. That's just the bottom line on that. Can we get... I I could, yeah, we could, we were having some technical difficulties. Talking about okay. the veracity of the colonization and, and the fact that uh, there is a, there are different perspectives in reference to that idea and how it was all. I don't want to misquote him, but how he couched it was a, a, a personal. But I, I just simply want to say say this when we look at this whole issue, biblically speaking, the Bible, the Bible speaks of the people that would inherit all of the land ultimately. Right. right. And the key element that identified those people is that they were enslaved. 
see, the people what we have right now, you read, he read the manifesto of the people. They said, we never live with the, the Zionists or the, or the Jews, and, and the Jews saying we never live with them. See, those are not the people of the book, because the, and I don't mean that to say. Well, Palestinians, are they have the right to say that they yeah, don't want Zionist but, but colonizers? But this is my point. See, the Berlin. people of the book are going to promote peace. And the kingdom is going to be peace. So when you have people that are killing, wanton, like America, mm -hmm. Great Britain, Palestine, it, those Israel. Is, uh, Israel. Uh, Israel. 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 Right. Yeah, right. 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 Yeah. Yeah. I'm just saying, the killers, all the killers, are going to get the killer's reward. But the people who promote peace How do you promote are going to peace? inherit the earth. This is what I'm saying. I, I, We're I, doing I, it right I, now. I, 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 I hear that. You know, We're it, doing it, it right it's now. Very, it's very reminiscent of, have a of, of themselves. I mean, you like can I have said, knowledge. You can have you knowledge yourself. But where you uh, just have we, that knowledge, have that conscience, change your way have, of thinking. Change your way of thinking. Well, Palestinians have that. Palestinians have that. One at a time, one at a time. Change the way of your behavior and how you see things. And then and you can acknowledge that other person being human, being like yourself. Remember the mic. It won't. It, I say, if you can acknowledge yourself, uh, acknowledge yourself, and acknowledge that other person is uh, being human, being and uh, uh, put, me, uh, put aside your differences, then you, you're being okay. Answer, okay. So I, hold I, up, I, hold up, hold up. So should a Jew who was in a concentration camp see Nazis as humans? Should they me, as a Palestinian, who, yeah. who, who who my people are being killed in Gaza, and Israeli, I mean, Israeli, Israeli, hold up, hey, Israeli. Hey, hey, Sit on a hill, cheering every single time a bomb drops wait, on hold Gaza. On, let me I one. see those beasts. Wait, wait, wait a minute. Like, I, you have the right to be angry. You have the right to be upset. Yeah. But at some point in time, you know, how long you gonna keep up with that anger? Because eventually the anger is gonna destroy you. Exactly. So you gonna be? Are you serious? No, you have to be able to find out. People of the world is actually stopping being angry. The problem with the indigenous people of the world is that they stopped being angry. Africans in America. Stopped being exactly. angry and they started being complicit. Exactly. Like I said, the difference with the Palestinians is we're still angry and we're going to be angry until we're our man. And we should. How do you, how, I mean, well, like you, I said, you have the right to defend hold on, yourself. Hold on, hold on, hold on. You have the right to defend yourself. You have you, the right. You made that point, but let me just say this, and, and this is the difference between the, uh, the, the mighty and the holy people haven't acquiesced. We're just in a position to where in it's, a state of dormant. Man, let me let me let me because we've been we've been letting the, the biblical and the spiritual right. and all of that yeah. talk, man. Let's let the the practical talk. Come on. Yeah. And I we're talking talk, about talk practical. we're I'm talking saying, about. Say, hold on, hold on. We got we got basically yeah, just, six minutes, right? Oh, we got six. Minutes. We got basically six okay. minutes left. So I, I want to talk about solutions, peaceful. Yeah. Hopefully, hopefully there, there is no hopefully. peaceful solution. Okay, well give me your solution. <laughs> there is no peaceful give, solution. Give me your solution. The first solution, I I think that the first thing I would we're encourage to do, and I'm gonna be very quick and try to only do a minute. The first thing I would encourage the Palestinian people to do is keep up resistance. The second thing that I would encourage Africans here in America to do is to remember our struggle, to remember my offer, and to get off our asses, quit being complacent, to go up here, if we're involved in the political process, to put some real pressure, to get with the Palestinian Americans, to get in some real protests, to write our senators, our housemen, to secondly, after that, after doing that, boycott every damn Jewish thing that we buy, eat, own, and everything, everything, don't even, if it means watching the damn news, Watch the internet news. Don't watch anything that is Jewish sponsored and send out a real message that these crimes won't be tolerated because today Palestine, tomorrow our backyard. That's right, mm -hmm. right. Exactly. Miriam, what, you, what, what, what would be your solution to this conflict? Okay, you you well, mentioned some of the things that Palestinians want. What would be a well, right now, the, the topic of discussion is Gaza. Right now, there's a blockade in siege on Gaza, right. in which basic uh, basic um, needs, necessities for life are not in Gaza. That is definitely essential Water for there rights, to be a ceasefire. Definitely. Not just that. Right now, if this was a ceasefire in Hamas and uh, Gaza doesn't gain the rights that it has, they won't enter concrete inside for the people to rebuild their homes. Okay. People now, you have hundreds of thousands of refugees in More Gaza. Refugees. Just, just from what is happening right now and these people can't rebuild their homes we need these basic necessities to enter and we need just like you said the resistance we need the resistance to keep doing what it is doing and to become stronger and stronger every single time we need the world to not only stand by Palestinians and the civilians and the women and the children and the men but to stand by our fighters because they're defending us they're doing what nobody else in the world is doing for us right. if it wasn't for them then we would be massacred without anybody representing us I'm not going to say that they keep us from being massacred because of course they don't because they cannot stand up against Israel's military. It's one of the top five strongest military 
Two men. Two. Oh. No, and I'm oh. throwing the V for Pakistan. Oh, okay. Victory. Oh, oh, oh. So, uh, top five strongest militaries in the world. They can't put up resistance. Uh, tr uh, a strong resistance that can meet theirs, but they are doing what they can. So standing by Palestine's people, standing by Gaza, standing against genocide, and standing for basic human rights means standing by the resistance and standing by our people. Okay. Tiffany? Okay, my solution. What would you be your solution? Okay. Along with knowing yourself. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. Let me let me get let me let me get down. Um, the solution is once again, be able to uh, def make sure you have the uh, necessity to be able to defend yourself and be able to uh, provi provide for those around you. Um, but at the same time, be able to um, come in terms with peace. Uh, not like I said, once again, come in peace with yourself and eventually uh, allow all the negativity, all the madness that's going up. Uh, die out and just come together and just you're talking no. about almost a hundred years of anger. Oh, that's what I'm saying, right? But it's at some point of time, you got to be able to find peace. You got, you can't continue on warring and warring with each other. You can't, you can't continue on fighting with each other because you're not, you're not proving no point. That's what I'm saying. It's not, it's not helping you. It's not beneficial. So, 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 no. So, what I'm saying is, you got to, some point in time, just say, you know what? I had enough of this. I'm tired of this. I'm tired of the fight. I'm tired of all this mess. And Let's just sit down and just negotiate and be able to just shake hands, and just come to peace with each other, and let's stop so all this what, madness. What would you say to a warmonger to negotiate peace? Uh, pretty much like I'm, I I'm Netanyahu. What would you say to me? Well, what I'll say to you, uh, whatever you got, just stop what you're doing, sit and just... Get your ass out of Palestine. <laughs> right, I mean, right, or you can do that. Yeah, just, just stop what you're doing, just... Just put aside your difference and, and I mean, ask yourself, how is this helping me? Is this you know helping what? me feel, how is this benefiting me? Ask, they ask it wait, hold up, let me finish, let me finish, let me finish. We got too many, we got to get this. How, how, how is it benefiting you, how is it helping you, how is it making you a better person? How, how does it make you feel on the inside? I mean, because, oh. I mean, yeah, you can defend yourself, but if you keep on yeah, going. soft on the arena on me. Okay, right. But if you keep on going, it's not, it's not too much, it's not really helping. It's not helping a okay. whole lot. I mean, okay. you don't want to continue a war with the same people over and over. Okay, thank you, you Tiffany. Thank you very much. Brother Gideon? Okay, I'll just simply say they need to study Yeshua, the king of the Bible, as well as Gandhi. And that Gandhi peace, didn't like Negroes in the first and book he brought over here was named Jesus. Yes, sir. <laughs> Go ahead. Uh, I totally understand the Palestinian plight. Um, but in one of the, like in one of the articles I said, that I read, it states that Israel was voted into existence by the UN. And due to that democratic vote, that, oh, they, that, they, land, that they aren't going anywhere. So given that, exactly. oh, no. given yeah, that, they are going given that Israel worry. and Israel says they're not going anywhere, the UN, the US, and their allies, I'll say that Israel's not going anywhere. I don't know how it can be done because Miriam said there can be no peaceful resolution. That is not but I don't think that this conflict is going to be solved with violence because if it was going to be solved with violence, it would have been solved, resolved okay. a long time well, let ago. Let me say something, the last thing. The people, what they need to stop doing here is trying to find a solution. You just need to support the Palestinian people. It's that's our right. fight. It's right our answer. struggle. We're saying it, we know what right. to do. This is the resistance we're going to put up. And y'all should say we agree with you. Next because Sunday. It's, okay. We got it. We got it. We, we got to go. We got to go. Thanks. Next Sunday, we got to have the same thing. You going to be able to come back next Sunday, man? Yeah. Yes, we need Sunday. to continue this discussion. Next, next so Sunday, we're going to discuss this team. We black gonna, son going to be on that. And Black Sun going to be, and it, I'm glad because it ain't going to be his mouth. It's peace <laughs> peace and love. Peace. peace. No, free, free Palestine. <laughs> Get your, you know, stop the war crimes, charge Netanyahu as a war criminal. Long live the resistance. Long live the resistance. Right, I'm proud to the people and Africans, man. Girl.